everyone and welcome back to my channel again. So um, we've been learning a lot lately and in the last two videos we covered code smells. So code smell is basically a sign that you are doing something wrong and you should clearly take action into improving your existing design. So today we will continue learning another code smell which is called a leaky abstraction. But before we actually get into um, understanding what it is, let's um, learn what's the example we have today. So again, we have a view controller class, and then it has a simple button. And whenever a button is tapped, we would um, create a model repository and save a UID. Very, very similar to one of the previous videos. So what does model repository do? So model repository is actually um, the class that interacts with core data. So it creates a container from a model, model is bundled here, um, and then um, it loads the persistent stores, um, captures um, reference to container, creates the new background context, and um, in the save method, it would just create a model in the context, set the ID, and then perform an asynchronous block. And whenever the object is deallocated, we would actually remove um, all the stores that are alive right now. So um, we would be actually closing all the connections with the database to um, not leak any memory uh, in the process. So um, test model is a very um, simple object, simple class that inherits from NS managed object. And um, actually model repository conforms to database manager protocol and it has a very simple method, save UUID. So coming back to the view controller. So view controller is very simple and let's um, draw diagrams to kind of re recap what we've learned so far. We have a view controller class and then it directly creates model repository, which is a concrete type. And then, um, so basically relationship is like this, right? And we all know that we don't, we, we should never couple concrete types with any other concrete type and we better eliminate this strong dependency from view control to model, model repository by introducing some, some, sort of, some sort of an abstraction in between. So um, database manager is actually an abstraction that we have, but since view controller is creating um, an instance of model repository whenever we tap on a button, that it, it is actually coupled with it. So, um, so the natural thing here would be to reference database manager, which is um, which is um, an abstraction in between. And then we can invert the dependency by forcing um, model repository to conform it. Yeah, model repository conforms database manager and view controller has no idea where um, it is stored. So this is the ideal case that we should be achieving in this current example. But what if you did not know how to come up to this example? So um, let's get into it. So if I run the app, um, a very simple app, just a single button. And in the, if you look at the console, whenever I tap save object, it actually creates an object with a UID. However, the model repository gets deallocated because we're not holding any reference to it. So whenever we tap on a save object button, it would always create a new instance and deallocate it. So uh, basically we are cre creating the object at runtime. So um, natural choice for not creating an object would be to have some sort of an abstract factory, let's say, um, view controller. So um, we have a view controller factory protocol, which has a single method make model repository and let's create an um, instant, uh, implementation of it. So model repository view controller factory, very long name, confirms view controller factory and then inside the method body, it returns model repository, which is a concrete type. And then view controller just has to um, get an instance of the factory via initializer injection so. All right, um, we're injecting factory into the view controller and then we can actually use it. So instead of getting their model repository directly, we would use factory to get the uh, model repository for us. And then uh, the part which is broken is seen delegate and then we have to inject it here. 
yeah, um, pretty easy fix. Let's see whether the app is functioning as we as we intended. And of course, it creates an object, and then whenever the scope of the method ends, it actually gets deallocated. So it's um, so it's lifetime is constrained into um, invocation of this method or actually off the button tab. And um, let's see how the dependency diagram has changed. So this is the this is the diagram that we should strive for. But like if we never knew um, why injecting a dependency into some other component um, should be done via initializer injection and without using abstract factory. So natural choice would be to rely on someone else to create dependencies for us. So then we could represent it something like this. So if we have a view controller, and then it has a view controller factory, which is an abstract interface, right? So it's an interface. And then it references directly the view controller factory. And um, at the same time, it references the database manager. Yeah, um, you can clearly see that there are um, more dependencies uh, for the view controller on some other types because earlier view controller would depend on only the database manager, um, but now it also depends on a factory and on a database manager. But the worst thing is that um, the dependency is asked at runtime. So what do I mean at runtime? So whenever we tap on a button, this is where the dependency gets actually created. However, remember that model repository is a volatile dependency and it's a stateful component. So um, whenever it gets deallocated, it closes all the references to um, connections with the database. So this is actually problematic because um, even though we have a very simple example right now, imagine if you had a very complex schema with lots of entities and lots of relationships. So closing and opening them would be not that easy. And the thing is that um, the term leaky abstraction comes um, to the point where um, the dependency view controller actually controls the lifetime of the dependency um, of, of, uh, of uh, the dependency it needs. So by controlling the lifetime, I mean that it creates it at runtime. However, it doesn't have to because its job is to just like pass a message to whoever conforms to the protocol that could save and not control its lifetime. That's why the name is a leaky abstraction because it leaks the detail of the memory management. And um, we've already touched upon this note um, in um, some other videos that we've uh, gone through. But um, the most important thing is that the memory management should belong to the composition because scene delegate actually instantiates entire object graph and it is its job to um, to control when to dispose objects and when not to. So the the term leaky abstraction here comes to the comes to the note that dependency is created at runtime and is disposed right away. By disposing, I mean it gets it gets deallocated. And I'm not gonna go deep into like how Arc works at this moment, but like uh, since there's no strong reference to this one to the object, it gets allocated um, after um, the scope of the block actually finishes. So. Um, instead of using factory or like abstract factory or like concrete factor or like static factory, doesn't matter. We should just have a reference to the database manager as so. And we should actually use manager to um, do whatever we need. So as you can see, we hold reference to the manager at all times. Of course, until this view controller uh, is alive and has not been removed from the view hierarchy. And the clear point is that scene delegate actually has to pass a manager, which is a model repository. It just saves objects successfully. And by just relying on a protocol database manager, instead of relying on an abstract factory or concrete or static factory, we actually um, lift up the responsibility of memory management because 
view controller has should not be um how to put it should not be concerned about how objects are created and disposed and this is solely responsibility of the composition and actually the responsibility of the composition root so um i guess this would be it for this video and remember that um com the, the components should not control lifetime of their dependencies as you remember in the control freak video we actually covered that the control freak term has come down to um dependency creating it, the other dependency so thus it controls the type that it gets created and it actually controls the lifetime of the dependency as well since we haven't touched upon this um, idea very clearly in that video this video actually um, gets deeper into why memory management should be lifted up because um, components would never know um, what dependency they are interacting with it might be a stateful comp component as we have here in this example um, like database connections could be flaky or like we should always lift that responsibility up um, to the composition where all the details um, are present. So um, this would be it for this video and thanks a lot again for watching.